everyone, this is Carmen Grow, and welcome to Grow Photography. Today I'm going to take you through my basic retouching workflow for fitness and sports. Okay, this is a fitness athlete. His name is Mark Magna. Mark Magna is a, a, a superb uh, trainer currently living down in Miami, Florida. He's also a former NFL player who's played for uh, New England and, and the Cincinnati Bengals as well. So uh, he's definitely had a great career and uh, I had the opportunity of working with him several years ago. And this is one of uh, my favorite shots from that shoot. And uh, I've got the image open now in Camera Raw. And the first thing I do is kind of look at the image and say, uh, you know, I need to find the right white balance for this. So this was shot in camera with flash uh, white balance, but I'm noticing the grays, the neutrals are going a little yellow. So the thing I like to do is use my eyedropper here in Camera Raw. And I know that if I, if I select a gray area or a neutral area in the image uh, with that eyedropper, and I know this floor is very neutral, I'm going to click about right there, and you'll see that it neutralizes the shot and gives me a good, uh, good start for white balance. So I start there. Um, that's good. I'm happy with that. I also notice it needs to be straightened a bit, so I'm just going to take my straighten tool here, and I'm going to find the, um, the angle that I feel will work here. Let's try that. Uh, it's pretty much there. Okay, good. And good. That looks better. And I'm not going to do too much more in Camera Raw. I'm going to just make sure by clicking here on the highlight clipping warning in Camera Raw, I can see whether any of the highlights are clipping. And the same thing here on the left hand side. This is the shadow clipping warning. If I click on that, it's showing me that some of these deep shadows here are clipping ever so slightly. I'm not too concerned about that. I don't mind if that goes solid black. That's not an important part of the shot. And in terms of highlights, I'm just going to zoom in a little more here. I don't see any highlights that are clipping. So I'm already pretty good with that. Okay, we start about there. For now, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. I've done my gray balance. Um, I've straightened it out. I've checked to make sure none of the highlights or shadows are clipping. Uh, and I think I'm going to go with that. See, I haven't done very much here in camera. I'm just going to open. One thing before I do that, though, is I'll go to my settings down here, and, uh, I'll, uh, and I'll, I'll just make sure that this is set up correctly. Now, I usually like to open uh, the file in Adobe RGB. 16 bits per channel is what I like to use, because I like to have that range of a 16-bit file to get started. I'm not going to resize the shot. I'm going to leave it at its nat native resolution. This was shot with a Canon 5D. So it's roughly 12 megapixels. It's showing up a little less here because I have done a, uh, I've done a slight crop on it due to the uh, um, straighten, straighten tool that I use there. And not going to do any sharpening for the time being. And that's pretty much it. Let's just say OK. So I've got those settings. I'm going to open the image. Let's open that up in Photoshop. So here we go. Got it open in Photoshop. And the first thing I do is kind of look at the image and say, you know, are there, I ask myself if there's any distracting elements. Um, and right away I notice that these, these weights back here, these colors, colored weights are kind of uh, a bit of an eyesore. I don't want my eye to go there. I don't, it's kind of distracting to me. These blue uh, cushions here. So right off the top, I'm looking uh, to, I'm going to probably subdue these, desaturate these to some extent so they don't get uh, take attention away from the main subject which is Mark here. Okay, uh, so that right away I'm just gauging it overall and knowing that also there's still some areas up here that are fairly warm, um, but that's not a huge concern. Uh, probably I'm going to darken up the background because again I want to bring some emphasis to Mark. So again, probably as a very first step I'm just gauging the image overall and kind of getting an idea in my head, a strategy for how I'm going to tackle this. But if we get down to the technical nitty gritty the very first part is always to spot. Uh, usually I'm using the, obviously if I hit S on the keyboard that gives me my rubber stamp tool. Uh, J on the keyboard gives me my um, uh, healing brush. So I like to use a combination of the healing brush and the clone stamp tool to eliminate uh, any imperfections or spots on the image. So right away I notice there's this tape marking on the ground. I'm just going to use my rubber stamp tool. And if you hit the square brackets, right square brackets will enlarge the size of the brush. Left square bracket will reduce the size of the brush. I'm going to go fairly large, about that size. Also, if you do a right click on your mouse, 
you can get to the brush size and the hardness of the brush. I'll go with a, a slightly hard brush. Size is about there. I'm going to choose an area to clone from, and I'm just going to remove that. And that's pretty much good for that. And reduce the opacity of that brush slightly just to be able to get that, and that's pretty good. I'll hit J on the keyboard to move to my healing brush. Reduce the brush size slightly by hitting my left square bracket. And I'm just going to spot away some of these areas on the image. And keeping my left hand on the space bar, I'm able to navigate quickly through the image and, and then just remove any other little imperfections I see. There's not much here. It's looking pretty clean. I'm getting really finicky about the skin here. It's all pretty good. There's this little scar here. I'm just going to remove that. And you'll see there's not a lot here. I can zoom out, look at the image. Again, I'm not so concerned about what's happening on the edges because I will be darkening up this whole area here. Just basically take going through the image like this. It's fairly clean. And keep in mind, some images will require more than others, of course. This one, uh, for what I'm trying to achieve, it's fairly clean now. So I think I'm good with that. The next thing I'll do is, again, we talked about the background and, and these distracting elements being these weights here. So the best way to tackle that is, uh, I think I'm going to bring up a hue saturation layer. So I'm going to go down to my adjustment layers down here and bring up a hue saturation. Okay. And all I'm going to do is overall bring down the saturation. Okay. I'm going to bring it down until those weights, uh, the colored weights in the background here, get really subdued and kind of get become less distracting in terms of the color. And I'm almost at a full a full desaturate here. That's pretty good. I've got my mask here. I'm going to fill this mask with black now. Okay, and option delete will fill that with the foreground color. Now I hit B on my keyboard in order to, hit, to get a brush again. And I'm going to make sure that white is my foreground color. And I'm going to paint on this mask now with white to bring back some of the desaturated tone here over these areas that I'm trying to uh, subdue. So you can see I can be really liberal with this. I've got a fairly soft brush going and I can reduce that if I want and just take my time with that or I can work really quickly. Again, this isn't terribly critical. I'm working away and you can see that I'm just making those areas less prominent. Okay, this blue here. I'll speed this up a bit so that we don't have to see the whole thing happening. And I'll see you in a second. Okay. I think that looks a lot better. And again, I have full control. Because this is on an adjustment layer, I have some control here. If I want to bring some of that back, I can. Obviously, I've got it also on a mask, or I can subdue it one completely. So either way, uh, that looks pretty good now. So if we back off and look at this, you'll see now that those colors that were a little distracting are gone or at least subdued. Uh, it, now those colored weights really blend in with the others. So that I like that. I can also go up here, which I haven't done, and you know, just see some of that yellow light, some of that tungsten light that was kind of bleeding into the image. I can subdue that as well because I don't need to see the that tungsten color there not an essential although like I said I will be darkening up this uh, this image further especially the edges quite happy with the movement of this how the ropes are kind of slightly out of focus here this is all good and I think what I want to do next here is enhance bring up uh, some contrast overall on the image so the way I'll do that is I'll go down to my adjustment layers here go to curves. I love to use curves as my uh, standard go-to for pretty much all or most of the adjustments I make. It's either curves or hue saturation, although I use many of the other selective color and, and levels, etc. But curves is probably my favorite thing to use um, because it really gives you full control over the spectrum of the image um, using this, this, you know, I can, I can really quite easily uh, create a contrast curve um, or select specific areas by using 
this little hand uh, icon here, I can click on a, a, a tone in the image. It will it will show me where that tone is, and as I click on it, it actually creates a point there. So that's quite cool. I'll just eliminate that to show you again. We'll just zoom in. I can take that and say, okay, I want to make this slightly brighter. I can click on that and just raise that a bit. And as I do, it's raising the brightness of that area. And then I, if I want, if I want a good contrast, then I want to take this tone that's very close to it and make that darker to separate those two tones. I can click on that and push that down. And now you'll see how we're getting contrast in the image. Okay. And again, as I click on different areas, I know that uh, more or less where in the spectrum that 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 uh, tone is. It gives me full a lot of control here. Okay, I can turn that on and off and see where I'm at. I haven't made huge jumps, but you can see that when you apply a curves adjustment like this, the color goes um, it gets gets affected as well. So it's become a little too saturated here, and that's because this. When I apply a curves adjustment like this, I'm not only affecting the luminance, but I'm also affecting the color. I'm, I'm, I'm changing the balance between the red, green, and blue channels. If I want to ensure that that sort of a change is a contrast change only, it's quite simple. You go to this adjustment, go to my blending modes here, and I can set that to luminosity mode. So when I do that now, you can see that I've changed the contrast, but not the color. Okay, so I'm a big advocate of that. Of really, uh, when you when you set up adjustment layers, try to think about separating color and um, luminance or or tonal tonal values of the image as two separate adjustments. And and the way to do that with making uh, a straight tonal adjustment is by setting that adjustment layer to luminosity. Okay. So that's the way I like to do it. If I needed to affect color, there are many other ways of doing that. Of course, there's this color uh, blending mode that that uh, will do that for you. So if I, um, you know, if I were to make an adjustment and set it to color, then I would be affecting color only and not the uh, the range, dynamic range, or the or the uh, the luminance values of the image. Okay. Okay. So we're there. Um, take a look at that. I like to turn it my adjustment layers on and off just to ensure I'm in the right place moving in the right direction I could push it a little further you can see that as I bring that up okay that's made a good some good impact in there the only thing that's happening here is some of these highlights are being blown out so that's fine I can leave that and then take again my brush tool by hitting command B on the uh, Sorry, not Command B, but B on the keyboard. That's my brush tool. And I can paint with black now. So I'm going to move over here and make sure my foreground color is black. And the reason for that is I want to paint in or paint back some of the original tone of the image in certain areas. So if I find that, um, you know, I was going too light in certain areas, I can bring that back and I can work quite quickly like that. Now there are so many ways to do this. Everyone has their own technique. I like to work it slowly like this and build up the image as I go. Okay, so I figured here that the highlight areas were getting too bright uh, with that adjustment. Although I like it in his arm here. I like that little edge light. Uh, I like what I'm getting here, but I don't like what was happening in his face there. I can disable this layer mask by right clicking uh, on the mask itself and then hitting disable mask just to be able to turn that on and off and enabling it there so you see how it brought some density back into those bright areas and now if we if we look at the before and after we made a nice a nice contrast bump in there and that's affected pretty much the whole image so that's not bad I'm liking where that's going and We'll just leave it there for now. And the next thing I'll want to do is think about the background. So the background right away is kind of overly bright. Um, and what I want to do is add a vignette or add some density to the, to the background, again, to put more emphasis on Mark. 
So I'm going to use an adjustment layer again. I'm going to come down here and use curves once again. And what I'm going to do here is I'm basically just going to take the midtone values and bring them all the way down. What I want to do as well is I want to make subdue some of these highlight areas. This, this machinery here, this light up here, and some of these bright areas in the background. I want to do that as well. So I'll bring that adjustment layer back up. And the way to do that is remember that we have our highlights on the right hand side of the spectrum here and the shadows are on the left. So I want to subdue those highlights. So by doing that, you can see that we are now affecting the brighter parts of the image because this machinery here probably sits somewhere around here in the image. And I can know for sure again by taking this little uh, hand uh, tool here and clicking on that and in fact it's it's right around the quarter tone so you'll see how this is split up in, in quadrants and when I say quarter tone I'm referring to this area here uh, that's the quarter the half the three quarter and the full shadow the deepest shadow that's the brightest highlight so in fact these areas here are in the quarter tone part of the image so if I want to affect those I can you know, and, and I'll take my extreme highlights way down too. And you'll see that uh, Mark is looking like he's f falling out in the dark, but of course I'm gonna bring him back. And I'll show you how we do that in a second. I'm only thinking, I'm only looking at the background now, and I wanna deepen this up even a little more. So I'm gonna bring this even further down. There we go. And I might wanna take up some of this part of the image. So I'm just gonna click on that now. And I'm probably going to just ramp that up a little bit. That's good. Okay, I'll say okay. And again, I like to use my brush tool to paint back areas that I want to bring back. So the mask now is white. I'm going to paint with hit B on the uh, keyboard to bring up my brush right square bracket to make that brush larger and I'm gonna make that quite large now and if I right click on my mouse I can make sure that that's a very very soft brush uh, play with the size of the brush as well and I'm gonna start painting back in uh, mark I'm gonna to tone this back a little by about 30 or 40 percent play with the size and just bring that some of that back in now I have brought back some of this background as well, so I'll reduce the size of my brush and make sure my foreground color is now white and I can paint some of that back in. And so what I'm doing is bringing some of that dark background back in. And again, as long as I'm using a fairly soft brush, I can be pretty liberal and work uh, pretty quickly with this. And that's pretty good. Okay, so this is where we were at. This is where we are now. I think I'm going to bring a little bit of mark back as well. So let's just work here with a smaller brush. Make sure that I'm working on his face here. And get a little bit more specific about what areas I want to be pronounced. There you go. Let's have a look. Okay. Right, bring a little more tone into this area of the rope here. Okay, so the background looks pretty good now. I'm quite happy with that. The next thing I'll want to do is play with color here and just to make sure that my skin tones are, the, are uh, accurate. So again, within this edits uh, folder here, I'll bring up yet another adjustment layer. Go to curves again. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up my info palette. If we go under window, info, that's gonna bring this up here. I'm gonna leave that up here. And I'm gonna have my curves adjustment down here. And I wanna have both of these up because I'm gonna be navigating with my eyedropper over the skin 
to, to get a feel for whether that color is accurate or not uh, for skin tone. Got my cyan, magenta, yellow, black, my CMYK on the right of the of the info palette and the RGB corresponding RGB values on the left here. And uh, knowing knowing CMYK fairly well because I've come from a, a print background, um, I'm going to use that to gauge good skin tone. I know that the magenta needs to be slightly lower than the yellow. Yellow probably about five to ten points higher, and the cyan is only about a, th a quarter to a third that of the magenta when we're dealing with Caucasian skin. So that is not so bad. It's actually not bad skin tone. It is getting a little bit saturated in here, but the, in terms of the overall, um, you know, range of the skin color, it's not bad. It's quite good, actually. So I may actually just leave that. Okay, I'm going to take, get rid of this altogether and bring up a hue saturation layer, adjustment layer. So what I'm going to do with that now is I'll set that to color because I'm looking to affect the color only. So my blending mode there is set to color. And I'm going to go into the reds here. I'm going to select those areas by choosing these eyedroppers. This part of the red. And you can see how it builds that part of the spectrum in here. It's telling you this down here is showing you what areas are being going to be affected by this adjustment. If I want to add to that range, I can use my plus eyedropper here, add to the sample, or I can subtract from the sample. So currently I have this much information. I'm going to add a little more because I want to get into these brighter areas. And it's not having a huge effect, but I want to make sure I cover it all. So I'm going to actually add to all these different areas. Make sure I'm affecting the skin throughout, and that's pretty good. And now I can play with my hue, uh, but we've determined that the hue is pretty much okay. I think what we just need to do is bring down the saturation slightly on the skin. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go down in a few increments at a time and have another look. That's looking good. So the cyan's come up a little bit, and the black has come up a little bit, which has given it more of a, a less saturated feel here, which I kind of like. And if I just uh, I'll, my, I'll use my left hand to hit the spacebar, I can again navigate through quickly and just have a look. And always turning that on and off just to make sure I'm heading in the right direction. And I do like that. I might bring it up just a, little, a hair more. I could push in the direction of yellow, which would be in this direction here my hue that is, plus two. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. Okay, I think I've got the skin tone where I like it. Here's the before. Here's where we are. It's a subtle change, but you can see we've desaturated and we've shifted the hue ever so slightly in the direction of yellow away from pink, away from the red here in our hue saturation slider. And that's pretty much where we need to be. I'm quite happy with that. Now, because there's very little color in this image other than, I'm just going to close off this, close off that adjustment layer. There's very little color on this image other than his skin there. So we don't need to be worried about the rest of the stuff shifting too much. There are no other reds anywhere else, really. Um, now, some may like it a little saturated, more saturated like that. I prefer it a little desaturated like this. Uh, it tends to add a little more grit, a little more edge to the shot when you're dealing with a fitness athlete. I like that uh, slightly desaturated look there. So I've got that. The next thing I'll look at here, and uh, so just to speak a little bit about sharpening, the last thing I usually do is the sharpening. So once I've made all my adjustments, I've got my color where I want it, I've got the look, good look and feel, the, the bite of the shot, the edginess of the shot, once I have it all there, um, I do apply a couple of levels of sharpening and I'll show I'll get to that in a second here But the other thing I want to do is I want to do some dodging and burning within his muscles here to really bring out because once again This is a fitness shot and you do want to emphasize You know the the, the muscular the musculature uh, the muscularity of the athlete um, So what I what we can do there's many different ways of doing a dodge and burn um, 
I mean, you can use multiple adjustment layers, one to affect the, the brighter parts of the image, one to affect the, the shadow parts of the image, and then do some masking and so on. There's, there's so many different ways there's, uh, to, to do that. Um, what we can do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you one thing that I like to do, uh, and that really ramps up the, uh, the edginess of the shot, is I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these and hit Command, Option, Shift, E, and what that's going to do is going to it's going to merge all of these layers to one layer up here. I'm going to call that merge, and I'm going to set this to luminosity mode because I'm going to make an adjustment here that's going to deal more with the contrast, the contrast of the image and the, or the overall bite of the image. Uh, bring up uh, under filter, go to unsharp mask, so sharpen, unsharp mask, and you'll see I have these settings in here by default. Um, if you, if you use a setting like this where you have a, a, a very low amount and a high radius and I keep my threshold to zero, and typically this is my starting point where I go with 20 and 50, it does an amazing job of giving the image this uh, film-like, and I have another video uh, where I just uh, refer to this particular effect, but this is one I really, really like because it adds a lot of punch to the shot. And it's very simple. It's just an unsharp mask with those settings. Um, so I, I start with that, I say OK, and then I can add a mask to that, fill that with, uh, actually I won't fill that, I will fill that with black, fill that with black, because I want to bring that effect only into certain parts of the image. So again, I'll hit B on my keyboard, a uh, fairly small brush, and I'm just going to work that paint with, a, with white, so let's switch that to white here, and I'm just going to work that in at 100% opacity. So if I hit zero on my keyboard, you'll see that the opacity switches to 100% here. And now I can work that in. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. I can work that in fairly quickly, only on those parts of the image that I want to bring that effect into. Because I was concerned that some of these shadow areas, like his eyes and some of these deeper shadows, were being affected in a negative way. So I like that. I would like it to be affected in here, the mouth area, the neck his clothing, the rope. And his legs down here, his shoes, that'll give it a nice, nice bit of contrast in the shoes. And that's pretty good. And if I feel I've gone too far, like I'm looking at this rope here, this area here is fairly washed out. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, this area is fairly washed out. So I want to bring some of that back. So if I hit X on the keyboard, that brings my foreground color to black now. And left square bracket will reduce the size of my brush. And I can paint back in some of that tone. You'll see how I brought the tone back. And hitting three on my keyboard will bring it a 30% opacity. And I'll bring some of that tone back. And maybe a little bit of this tone back in here. A little bit in the fingers. Maybe just in here, a touch. Okay, so we'll see what that's done. Quite an improvement, I would say, right? Hopefully you agree with that. It's a very, very simple technique, and it does wonders for an image. If you have, if you only have a few minutes to make, to make the image better, uh, especially when you're dealing with fitness and you really want to make those muscles pop, this is probably the best technique I can recommend. And again, if you just take a few seconds to with a soft brush to brush in, uh, brush it into only those areas that you want to really pop and come to the front. Uh, just the way I've done it here, that really helps. So I think, I mean, we could go further and, um, you know, dodge and burn this now. I have this uh, set to luminosity mode and uh, this layer here, and I have only focused on certain areas. So now I can actually, if I want, I can take the dodge tool here and just go in with a soft brush again and paint in some of those brighter areas. So again, as long as I'm working on highlights here, I go back to my range up here, go to highlights, and bring this down to a fairly low opacity, say about 10%. I can, I can start to, I should be working on the image, not on the mask. So you should be selecting the image itself 
and you'll see how I can start to bring in some highlights here now. Okay, I'm just gonna paint in some additional highlights, just some of these bright areas here, just bring them out a little. There we go. Okay, not a huge difference, but you'll see that every little bit counts. Every little bit uh, that you add uh, will bring more, more power, more strength to the image. And what I'll do now is I'll switch to my burn tool quickly and burn in and make sure that I'm set to shadows for burn. And again, very low opacity. I will zoom in a bit and reduce the size of my brush and just try to burn in some of these parts of the image. Now you can take all the time you want here. You can work slowly. Uh, I like to work fairly quickly here, knowing what I want. And if I've gone too far, I can always go mask that out of there. I mean, there's many different ways of doing There's uh, this. There are uh, some uh, non-destructive ways of doing this, which I can bring up and, and I have brought up in other videos. Uh, but again, there are so many different ways of achieving the same thing. And, uh, you know, when you're working quickly, you can use whatever comes to mind. And you always do have your original image here. And most of this is on adjustment layer. So you can always bring back the original detail and information in the shot. Okay, so if we look at that now and look at the before and after, you'll see we made some huge improvement to this image. Okay, so I've already applied one unsharp mask, which was that contrast enhance or this, this, uh, this layer here, which has brought some nice bite and contrast, local contrast into the image. The last thing I can do is I can select all these, hit Command, Option, Shift, E again, and create yet another layer, and just call this Sharpen. And let's call that Fine Sharpen. And with Fine Sharpen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to Luminosity again. Of course, when I'm sharpening, I only want to affect the tonality, the con you know, make sure that we get the contrast and so on, but I do not want to affect the color. So that's quite simple to do again by setting this to luminosity. I'll go into filter and again, unsharp mask. But now my settings will be different. So when we're doing a fine sharpening, we're gonna start with about 100 here, about one on the radius and about three on the threshold. Those are my settings uh, that I start with. Just have a look at the image and I'm going to brush this into only those areas that I want uh, sharpened so it'll be very few areas of the image. So what I'm looking at now is the eyes, the hair, the mouth, some of these, uh, the rope, um, maybe these veins, the shirt here and so on that I want to sharpen to enhance. I feel I can go a little further with this in terms of the amount. Let's go up to about 150 on this. I'll just punch that in, 150. When you're viewing uh, the image for sharpening, try to go to one to one if you, um, that is 100% uh, enlargement on your screen. Okay, that gives you the best sort of feeling of what that sharpening is going to do. Okay, that's not bad. I think I'm going to leave it at that 150, 13. The threshold here is an important one as well, because you'll see here, watch as I bring the threshold down, all of these soft areas or areas of low contrast are also being sharpened. I don't want that. So what the threshold does is it brings, if as you bring that up, you'll see that um, we are getting, we are allowing the sharpening to only affect the, high, the contrasty areas and not these out of focus soft areas. So as I bring this up, you'll see that here it's probably have gone too far now. All areas are pretty much unsharpened or very little. Only the highest contrast areas are sharpened. So I'll bring this threshold down to about three, I think. And that does sharpen those areas slightly, but not somewhere between three and six is good. 
I'll hit four on that, and that's probably pretty good. I'll say okay. And the last thing we'll do is add a mask again here, hit B on the keyboard for my brush. I'm going to fill that with black by hitting Option Delete on the keyboard, filling that with the foreground color. I will hit X on my keyboard, which will switch the foreground color, uh, push that to the back, and bring the white forward. And now I'm going to zoom in with a very small brush here. I'm going to just paint in certain parts of the image that I want sharpened. So I want that sharpened. Bring back some of the, the beard, the stubble here. And again, I can work fairly quickly with a soft brush now. I just want to bring out those parts of his body, the shirt, the arm, and pretty much all of this, but leaving the background as it un unsharpened because I want to bring emphasis to the athlete himself and not the background. If I sharpen up the background, I'm going to get... Um, less separation in the shot. Okay, now I'm going to just take these. I'm actually going to drop these down into the edits area here. And now we can have a look at the image. The image is pretty much complete. I'm quite happy with that. We can look at the before and the after. Before and the after. Okay, I hope you like that. That's my retouching workflow. Uh, I'm sorry if I made this a little lengthy. I've gone through a lot here. This is a fairly long tutorial, but hopefully you can get something out of this. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. Um, I hope to bring you many more. Also, give me uh, give me some insight. Let me know whether uh, whether you felt it did go a little long or whether you would prefer shorter tutorials. And I do have some shorter tutorials. This one has gone uh, fairly long. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And, uh, Thanks again, and we will see you on the next episode.